Hello, my name is David Brokaw, and today we'll be discussing the rights and responsibilities of corporate directors and officers. Corporate directors, or members of the board of directors, represent the ultimate authority within a corporation. They make the highest level business strategy decisions. They're responsible for long-term uh, business goals. They're, they're really the, quote, brain, end quote, of the company um, and it's a very critical integral job um, without a competent board of directors most companies would find it pretty difficult to survive into the future the board is elected by the shareholders and as such they're of course answerable to the shareholders um, they serve fixed terms which are usually determined by the corporate bylaws but in some cases they can be decided by statutes um, these same corporate bylaws and statutes would also govern whether or not a uh, director could serve multiple terms successively, um, things like that. Uh, there are two types of corporate director. There are inside directors, which are directors that, in addition to serving on the board, also have another role within the company. And then outside directors are people that do not. For example, uh, Apple's CEO, Tim Cook, also, also sits on the Nike board of directors. His full-time job is with Apple, so as far as Nike is concerned, he's an outside director. Now, with such a critical job within the company, the directors have certain very large um, broad-reaching rights that enabled them to do that job effectively. The right of participation um, states that the directors have the right to be notified of meetings of the board, they have the right to attend those meetings, and they have the right to vote on issues during those meetings. The right to inspection, or right of inspection, gives them the right to inspect the records, the books, facilities, the operating processes of the company, um, those two rights together really form the authority that the board has to do their job. They use their right of inspection to understand the company in order to make good decisions, and then they use their right of participation in order to make those decisions. Um, the right of indemnification, I've marked it there um, to make sure that I remind, remembered to tell you that the right of indemnification is not a guarantee. There are some states where it, you don't have the right of indemnification, um, which all it really means is if a board member as part of their position in the company incurs legal fees or damages from litigation, they have the right to be reimbursed for that. Um, and then the last one here, it's not technically a right of a board of directors to be compensated. Um, and in fact, for many years um, in the past, they weren't compensated. Uh, board members served without pay. Um, but now it's fairly standard practice that corporate board members receive compensation for their time. And in fact, the RMBCA, the Revised Model Business Corporation Act, um, states that unless the corporate bylaws say otherwise, the board actually sets the board members' compensation amounts. So they really get to write their own paychecks, which has always been kind of a dream of mine. I would like to talk just a little bit further on the compensation that a member of the board would receive. Um, as you can see here, a full-time private sector worker makes in a year, on average, um, four, forty to forty-five thousand dollars a year. They work usually around thirty-four to thirty-five hours a week, which averages out to a little over seventeen hundred hours in a year. Um, which, if you do the math, that's a little over twenty twenty-four dollars an hour. Um, Standard and poor companies, if you look at the average salary of a member of a, of a board of directors a year on average, and they usually work less than 300 hours 
per year in this position, which maths out to about $800, $830 per hour. Um, so pretty clearly, at least from the company's perspective, the board of directors is worth substantially orders of magnitude more to them than are their ordinary employees. So corporate directors, the, the members of the board, have very broad overreaching rights and powers and they're very very well compensated for their time. In return they have a pretty hefty list of responsibilities. Um, as I said before, since they're elected by the shareholders, they're answerable to the shareholders. Um, if they're not doing an acceptable job, the shareholders will vote someone else in and they will lose that sweet $250,000 a year. Um, also, if they're being grossly negligent or, or clearly not doing their job well, uh, the shareholders could vote to remove them. Um, their right to participation gives them the ability to attend meetings for the board of directors. Obviously, as part of their job being a member of the board, they're expected to attend those meetings. Um, one of the more important roles that they play is they the board of directors selects and then, of course, also has the ability to remove the officers of the company, uh, which we'll touch on more in just a moment. They also declare dividends for the company, determine the capital structure, um, how much money are we going to borrow, how much are we going to um, take from stock, how, where are we going to get, get our money that we borrow, is it going to be notes, bonds, etc. Um, pretty important questions that the board has to answer. And then they also make general overarching policy decisions for the company. Now, the officers, I'm sure everyone here has heard the term the CEO, the corporate executive, I'm sorry, the chief executive officer, uh, also sometimes known as the president, and then there are the vice presidents, like the chief information officer, the chief financial officer, um, the treasurer, secretary, these are the officers of the company. They run the day-to-day, -day. they're the, the face of the company, they're the people that you think of like when you think of Apple, you think of, well, now it would be Tim Cook, but previously you would think of Steve Jobs. Um, he was the CEO. He was the president of Apple, kind of the figurehead. Um, when you look at a corporation, um, there's something that the business world has been long since aware of, is that the people that run your business every day, the officers, and the people that own the business, the shareholders, are almost always not the same people and when their goals differ and their plans do not align there exists what we call the agency problem where the agents the officers um, need to have their priorities realigned with those of the people who actually own the company the shareholders um, you may have heard the, t the term or the phrase piercing the corporate veil um, what this is since a corporation is a legal person, legally they are a separate entity that can enter into contracts, a uh, corporation can be sued, it can sue, it can pay its own fines, uh, but one thing that a corporation cannot do is be incarcerated. In the case of uh, criminal activity, uh, you can't put Microsoft in jail. Like, Microsoft doesn't actually physically exist anywhere, so you couldn't lock it up. Uh, and so, in the case of a company con uh, conducting criminal activity or, or behaving in a criminal way, um, the government will sometimes pierce the corporate veil and directly charge officers for their actions or for the actions of, of employees that worked underneath them. Um, this is an important thing to consider if you're wanting to be an, an officer for a, a company is that you have you have that personal liability um, that the company's actions can also in some cases be your actions even if you didn't do them yourself personally um, I would like to since I talked about 
the compensation of a board member. I wanted to talk about the compensation of a CEO. Um, and I decided that the best way to do that would be with some charts and graphs. So this first one here is a comparison of CEO pay and average worker pay in a couple of different countries around the world. As you can clearly see, the, the chart is, is pretty clear on this point. Um, CEOs in the United States make above and beyond way more money than CEOs make anywhere else in the world. Um, it's almost it's almost funny, it's almost insane how much more money a CEO makes in the United States on average than uh, companies elsewhere in the world. I'm not sure what they do so much better than everyone else, but it's pretty clear that they're doing it and they're raking in money hand over fist. Um, this chart here has a uh, it's the growth in CEO compensation from 1978 to 2012. Uh, as you can see, it's almost 900%. Um, I really wish that I could show you a similar chart showing that the average American's wages increased by almost 900% since 1978, but unfortunately that's just not the case. And then this chart here shows the source of the compensation. Uh, back in the 30s and 40s, the CEO would receive a salary, and if they did a good job, they would get a bonus, and then that was how much money they made. But nowadays, you know, you'll see they have their salary and they get their bonus, but then they also have options and stocks and things like that. Um, this, I think, really was how the business world has learned to cope with the agency problem because making the CEO like in this particular chart you can see that 60 percent more than half of the money the CEO takes home comes from non-salary sources um, it comes really from driving up the share price by doing everything they can to maximize the value of the shares of the company, which is, of course, in most cases, what the shareholders want. So it, it helps curb the agency problem. Paying the CEOs and other officers in this way uh, helps align their priorities with the shareholders. Now, again, with such large amounts of authority and exorbitant compensation, uh, the CEO and other officers, again, much like the board of directors, have some pretty strict responsibilities that they have to adhere to as well. Um, the duty of care is, it's pretty basic, it's just that they are required to exercise good judgment and, and take all reasonable care when making decisions on behalf of the corporation that they work for. Um, now there is the business judgment rule, which means that you can't punish or penalize um, a poor decision as long as the decision was made uh, reasonably. It was made in the best way possible with the information that the officer had at the time. Um, the duty of care does not mean that anytime something goes wrong, heads get to roll. Um, <laughs> which is, is good for people that are in that line of business. It would be pretty unfortunate if they just, anytime something, the economy turns, people just lose their jobs. Um, that would be crazy. The duty of loyalty is a little bit more complicated. There's a couple of things that that encompasses. Um, obviously, you have to be loyal to the company. You can't compete with the company, you can't go work for their competitors, you can't share information with the competitors of the business, um, but it also entails things like uh, usurping opportunities. So if, if the CEO, for example, um, as part of their job, they're presented with a business opportunity and instead of taking it on behalf of the company, um, they take the opportunity for themselves for their own personal gain that breaches their duty of loyalty to the company and in, in most cases that would be um, pretty heavily penalized by 
the board. I would, if I were a board member, and I saw a CEO do that, I'd probably vote to remove them. Um, but it also covers things like insider trading as well, um, or self-trading. Now, the duty to disclose conflicts of interests, um, really, in my opinion, just is a carry-on of the duty of loyalty if you as a corporate officer find yourself in a position where you think that you are in danger or a danger um, of making a decision that would not go in the best interest of the company or if you find that you're in a position where you don't think that you could be the person who could make the right decision it you have an obligation to disclose that you have an obligation to make sure that the people in charge know so that they can take the appropriate actions. Um, I believe that's everything that I have for you uh, today. Uh, my sources for this particular project, um, Bloomberg gave me the information mostly about pay. Um, the Huffington Post and the Washington Post is where I got the charts. Um, the textbook and the Legal Law Institute at law.cornell.edu really provided me with the bulk of the information that I needed to share this all with you. I believe that's everything I had. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.